Hey, there you are. Little stud blocker out in the shop. I want to give you a little uh, up status update. And uh, I also wanted to show you, I'm making some peaches whirly gigs. And I wanted to show you how I'm making these wings, which you could easily put just uh, one of these things on there and, and make a, they're supposed to be like spinning wheels. I'm, I'm working on a little caboose here. So I wanted to uh, show you how to do that. But <laughs> I, I wanted to tell you about uh, the dancing dinosaurs that I was working on. That piece of automata, sand powered automata that I was working on. <laughs> it's kind of a funny story and I probably shouldn't tell it to you because it will make me look really foolish. But I'm going to tell it to you anyway. Uh, you know, I, I thought the deadline was je uh, May 30th. I thought I had to have it done May 30th. So I was really, I had about three weeks to finish that whole thing. And so I was getting down to the wire and uh, I wasn't done yet. You know, on the 29th, I wasn't done. I wasn't even that close to being done. <laughs> So I had worked myself into a tizzy and, and I got myself pretty worked up and of course I went to bed the 29th and and uh, I couldn't sleep. So I got up about 1.30 and, and I started painting the background scene on a, on it and uh, yeah, it took me about three or three or four hours. And so I did that and then I went back to bed for a few hours and got back up and started working on it some more and worked on it all the way up until about 2.30 in the afternoon. No, it was about 3.30 in the afternoon and I had to leave at 4. <laughs> so anyway, somehow I finally got it done. And uh, as I was heading out the door, I thought, myself you know you ought to check that date and make sure you got the right date you know and uh but i was like oh no i'm already late i gotta go you know so i got on the road and drove two hours to portland and uh to the gallery and <laughs> show up there oh, there's nobody there <laughs> and uh, i find out that i'm uh two days early so <laughs> Luckily, Daniel Rolnick and Megan, some friends of mine, were, were there, and I got to drop off my piece, which, you know, it actually turned out pretty well, because a couple days later, when it actually, the opening actually was, I was really sick, and I couldn't go to the opening, which I was really disappointed about. But anyway, at least I got my uh, piece in the art show, and and so it, it all worked out. <laughs> I was just a couple days early. You know, <laughs> if that only happened once, uh, it'd be a, yeah, okay. But, you know, that's happened to me before. I, I've done things like that. I get myself so worked up and then, oh, geez, I can look at this tunnel vision. And anyway, it's my strength and my weakness, <laughs> I could tell you. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> but let's move on to, <laughs> to this. I want to show you how to how to make these things. Well, what I do, I start off my stock. I uh, get a good measurement of it. This is actually uh, a sixteenth more than three quarters. So whatever my the width of my stock is, I'll set up my table saw and, and square it off. So it's square on then I'll uh, drill a 3 16th inch hole. Okay, and let me show you this board. It's pretty simple. It's just a 2x4, and I uh, nailed this piece of wood on there. It could be any kind of piece of wood, it just needs to be at 90 degrees. So there's nothing special about this wood. This is a sacrificial fence thing you got here so so you just need that and you take your your piece of stock of course this one's already been cut and you put the hole to the right it just needs to be on the side there 
You can't see it there. You just don't want to be seeing it on the front. It needs to be on the side. Like that. And then you take a... Uh, Take a clamp and clamp it up against that block, like so. And then you just, I have my gauge set at about 38. According to Jim Steinbrecher, that's the most efficient angle. But, you know, people, you can use whatever angle you want. <clears throat> so, you, as far as the depth, I have, this cut is three quarters of an inch deep. I didn't actually plan it out that way, but when I measured it, it was three quarters of an inch deep. I just kind of looked. And, you might have to uh, experiment a little bit. <clears throat> with a little block of wood <laughs> you want the saw to be in the middle of the cut as much as possible or as in the middle diagonally as much as possible right you want it right down the center so both sides look even so you're going to probably have to fool around a little bit. And what you do is you just undo this clamp here and slide this block back and forth until you get it where you want. So it might take you a couple pieces of wood to get it all dialed in to where you want it. But then you'll be able to cut them. And it's, I really, I like this uh, method because it's real safe. You just, uh, let's see if I can get back far enough. All you do is you just push it into the saw and pull it back. And it's that easy. So we just cut this one right here. And what you want to do, you just want to flip it. Oops. I wanted that to look a little smoother. Don't twist it any way like this. It's just, you flip it. Don't twist it. And then you'll be cutting that edge. Well, after you uh, get your square piece all cut out, then you're gonna need to drill a half inch hole. But you don't wanna drill it all the way through. You wanna leave about eighth of an inch at the bottom there. Not like that. Then you can uh, take your plywood pieces and let me show you how I do that. I just take four pieces of wood or you can take how many you want, six, eight, nail them all together and then just draw the pattern on the top one. And that saves you a lot of time and you know that they're basically the same shape. And I'll leave them, after I cut it out, I'll uh, leave them all nailed together and I'll sand them while they're all together. I'll use the belt sander or go over to the belt sander and, and get those curves on the curved part of the belt sander. And There's a few other areas you can get on there and uh, I'll finish it up with a little drum sander on the drill press. So that's how I cut those out. <clears throat> so then you just, I just use some regular wood glue and put these in there. One thing you want to make sure on these wings is they need to alternate. You don't want them the same. You don't want it like that because as it twirls you got a, the front is this part that curves in and when you come here then you got the back so it needs to be the opposite it needs to be like this 
get it far enough away. So when it spins, that front edge is like here, and then here comes here it comes again. So make sure you get it like that. And then what I do is I take my little brad nailer. Let me see that. Very good. And I, I'll say, this is going to be on the outside. This is going to be on the inside. So right toward the bottom, I'll put two nails. One here and one here. And then the same thing. One here and then one here. And that just gives it a little extra mechanical fastening there well <laughs> forgot to mention uh, about this uh, wood this is a piece of oak and I mentioned earlier that it was a sixteenth of an inch uh, more than three quarters of an inch wide if you can try to use something wider than three quarters of an inch even if it's just a little bit because that gives you a little more space down in this hole to put that nut and everything and, and a cap on top of it. So I used to just use the regular three quarter inch stuff I got from the Home Depot, but I found if I use it something that's just a little bit thicker, it, it's a little bit nicer. There's that. And uh, the plywood I'm using is one eighth inch marine plywood so there's that and the bearings I got this uh, little bearing I got off eBay you should be able to get about a hundred of these for 20 bucks if you shop around they're half inch and they have a 3 16th inch hole in there and what I do I'll just put a little super, a couple drops of super glue down in there and spread it around with a toothpick. And then I'll put my bearing in there, like so, and and pound it down in there with a with a dowel. So, and then what I usually do, I'll come up with a little bigger drill bit, like. Uh, seven, seven thirty seconds, and drill this hole out just to make sure that there's nothing rubbing. So I usually ream out this hole a bit, so it's bigger than three sixteenths. I think that's all I forgot to mention. So one thing that I do extra. <laughs> Let's give everything a couple coats of uh, linseed oil. It's not showing up very good on the camera, but I figure that just gives it an extra bit of protection. Well, the, I forgot to mention this block of wood is three inches long. So, and uh, <laughs> you can see my thumb, I had a little accident here. And it was uh, drilling out this half inch hole. I was just holding it with my hand and the drill bit that I have, I should have known better, it has a tendency to grab and it grabbed and flipped around and hit me in the thumb and <laughs> it didn't feel very good. So my advice is to clamp it down uh, before you try drilling out that half inch hole. That's what I'm doing now. All right, you know, and you could you could leave it just like this, but <laughs> that's the way I used to do it. But I like to get over here on the drum sander, and uh, and you can really make it look kind of nice. So I'll show you how I do that. <clears throat> the main thing is you have to keep this wing needs to be perfectly vertical. So whatever it is, it needs to be, you got to keep this vertical while you're sanding.
You can get that all the way down there like that. Something about like that, and I'll finish it up with some hand sanding. And then you end up with something that looks like <clears throat> this. I can show you these uh, cabooses I'm working on. There's a guy in town. <clears throat> father recently died he was a railroad guy and he asked me to make a couple of these cabooses with the old SPNS railroad on there but while I'm at it let me show you what I'm doing here see in there but I got these uh, nuts. And I, I cut a little groove with my uh, Dremel and uh, a cutoff wheel. Make a little groove in there so I could use, uh, use the screwdriver to tighten it. You just put the nut on there and tighten it up and, and put a drop of super glue on it so it won't move and then you take a little I cut some little plugs and you stick that super glue that in there or you could use Elmer's or what or wood glue or whatever and sand it all smooth and paint it up and then your bearing is all nice and concealed inside there and it won't come off it's almost impossible for it to come off unless that nut came loose it's about the only way these cabooses are kind of nice well i hope that's of some use to you i'll see you down the trail